Michael Bailey. I'm here with Callie O'Neill with the Rama Exhibit, an amazing art exhibit featuring the artworks of a magnificent elephant, Rama. And here's Callie O'Neill who can tell us more about it. Hello. Rama's most innovative keeper, Jeb Barsh at the Oregon Zoo, worked together in these paintings. And Jeb was able to train Rama to paint by using his trunk to blow, and he would just say, Rama, trunk? And Rama, would, we would put some paint, some non-toxic children's paint or watercolor into his trunk, and Rama would just blast the paint. And then watching how the colors were going, I would decide what order the paint would be put on in, but Rama painted whatever he wanted. Then at the end of numerous sprays, like really powerful sprays, in between Rama washing his own trunk, ears flapping, tail going, he was so excited. Then we might hand him a brush, and with the brushes he could use acrylic paints to just do these beautiful flourishes and then hands the brush back to Jeb. Thus came this series of paintings um, that are the first paintings of their kind ever between a man, a woman, and an endangered species elephant, an endangered species animal. So Rama, you can easily tell what's Rama in these works because they are the abstract expressionist or color field works. They're always abstract. That's what he loved. And every year was different, by the way. One year he'd do high spray and beautiful blending, and the next year it looked like flowers, and then another year it looked like you know, drips or blobs or whatever it was. And mine is in every painting. There is an endangered species animal or an endangered ecosystem. The earth appears, we've got, this is a poster for the IUCN. The earth appears in every painting and I have made that commitment in every painting or work of art that I ever do, especially the Rama works, I will paint the earth in every painting. There's also the borders. These paintings come from my deep love of nature and my inspiration from illuminated manuscripts and Tibetan Tonka paintings. So the borders are all symbolic. It's again, part of that hidden meaning, that recorded message. They're connected to either the indigenous people and wisdom, most closely connected with that species, or something about the ecosystem. Like in the orangutan painting, I painted as many species as I could to indicate that this is not just about the big species that we know and love, but when that species is threatened, the whole ecosystem is are threatened and the indigenous people and all of us become threatened. So this is a new twist on abstract expressionism and one of the basic tenets of this work is that in the 1950s or so, art lost its content and its power. Art became just splatters or stripes or an eggshell blue canvas and there was no more content so people couldn't relate to art and it will be art that exponentially expands the reach of this knowledge that we all have to care for all the species in every neighborhood, every day, whatever they, were, whatever they are, whether it's your watershed or your forest or however we can all contribute to the biodiversity, the variety of life on earth that sustains us. So this is, these are visual prayers, they're meditations really on behalf of all life, that they may move people and we can all agree you know, that nothing is more important to our well-being than the preservation of nature, which of course all indigenous people have always known.